God's people. Come on. When in Job, when, 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 when the enemy was traveling to and fro seeking whom he was going to devour, God said, have you tried my man Job? <laughs> he said, I would, but you got to hit the protection around the body. He said, well, you, you can touch him, but you can't have his life. He, he gave him the conditions. He told him what the rules and engagement were. You can have his physical uh, 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 possessions, but you can't touch him, his life. The devil had to get God's permission. The prophet Isaiah tells Hezekiah, what thus says the Lord. Uh, he, 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 he tells Hezekiah what thus says the Lord. God gave him a word for Hezekiah. So it's only befitting that he give the word to Hezekiah <laughs> and not anybody else. When God gives us a word for somebody, the word is for that somebody. Right. It's not for everybody else. If God gives me a word for, for Mother Woods, I shouldn't give it to Mother Williams. Because the word ain't for Mother Williams, it's for Mother Woods. Yeah. And shame on me if I don't do what God told me to do with the word that he gave for me to give. <laughs> and so we have to be obedient even in the, uh, how we deliver the word and to whom we deliver it to. Preach. The word ain't going to benefit Mother Williams, it's going to be benefit Mother Woods. That's why he told me to give it to her. That's right. As it is here in our text with the word for, for Hezekiah. But the word was to set your house in order. For you shall die and not Ooh, live. You see, all the time we expect messages from God to be you're going to get a five bedroom mansion. <laughs> you're going to get a brand new car. You're going to get that main box. You're going to get a dance. All your bills is going to be paid. But but the truth of the matter is, most prophetic words were, were, were was about damnation. And Great, judgment. it was. And so we can't not receive the word because we are in agreement with the word. If the word was from God, despite the message, God was remarkably kind and gracious to Hezekiah and telling him that death was near. Not all people are, are, are given the time to, to set their house in order. See, we do a decent job getting our, our natural homes in order when, when we have advanced warning that that company is coming. <laughs> when we, we run the vacuum, we wash the dishes, we do the laundry, we sweep and mop the floor to set our natural house in order. And as we, we get up in age and closer to, to death, we, we, we do other things to get our houses in order. We, we start assigning durable powers of attorneys. We draft our wills and, and we define beneficiaries, beneficiaries on our insurance policy. We begin to pick out our, our, our burial plots and, and our headstones. We, we, we tell our, our loved ones what we want to wear. We say who we want to sing and what songs we want to sing. Yeah. All trying to get things in, in order. Making all of our wishes known why we're yet able to speak up for ourselves. Yeah. All to set our natural houses in order. Thank you, Jesus. Well, what about this house? What, what, what precautions do we take in getting this house in order? What do we do to, to set this house in order? Are we repenting? Are we asking for forgiveness? Are we righting our wrongs? Are we calling those who we've offended and those who we've been offended by? Are we asking God to, to cleanse us and to search us? This is the house that, that we should be prioritizing to make sure that it's in order. You see, where you lay down at at night, that's, that house is temporal. And, and if the Lord were to take you out today, it, it, it wouldn't even matter. With whatever you have, whatever balance you have on your mortgage, don't even matter to you no more. With whatever uh, uh, fixes need to be done, 
won't even matter anymore. But, but, but this house, how are we setting this house in order? We can never take life for granted because we never know how near or how, how, how uh, we really are to death. For death doesn't have an age limit. There's folk dying all ages, folk dying pre prematurely. They dying at birth, they dying at five, 10, 20, 50, 80, 90, 100. Death has no age limit. Even if you are, are ill and near death, God is still gracious because you are yet alive. We, we, we complain about the, our proximity to death. Preach. And overlooking the fact that yet, even though we may be close, we're still yet alive. Mm -hmm. Hezekiah here in the text was 39 years old when he received word that he would soon die. Mm -hmm. Most would complain about having to die or complain about dying at such an early age. That boy got, he got his whole life ahead of him. Bridge. <laughs> he, he just a young fellow. We, we, we would overlook the blessing in knowing that, that our time is, is drawing now. Because you are alive, you, you still have time to set your house in order. If I was to ask everybody today, uh, uh, is your house in order? Everybody would raise their hand and say, yeah, it's in order. I don't think anybody would say it's not. Everybody would say it's in order. But, 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 but by whose standards is it in order to? Is it in order according to your standards or God's standards? Because we all have different standards. Is your house in order by the same standards that you judge your neighbor by? What standards? Because we, we, we can think things are in order, but then find out that there are things that are not in order. Uh, New Year's. After we, had, we had family come to town to visit our house. Mm -hmm. I thought our house was in order. <laughs> it looked good to me. <laughs> but, but my lady Shayla didn't think it was good enough. All right. So she going above, in my opinion, going above and beyond. <laughs> pulling stuff out, moving this around. Doing all this extra stuff to ensure that the, that the house was in order. Yeah. And after she got the movers out, I said, I guess there wasn't in order. <laughs> Didn't never think to look behind that or under that. And somehow, that, sometimes that's how we do it our, our, our natural body when it comes to setting this house in order. We, we think we're good. Preach. But move some stuff around and see what, what gets exposed. Yeah. And so we got to make sure that, that this house is set in, in order. Preach. We never know. But what we do know is that we have time to get it in order. And the more that needs to be put in order, the more time it's going to take to get it in order. <laughs> if you maintain a clean house, it don't take that long. <laughs> but if you have an unkept house, Come on. it's going to take you a little bit longer than, than normal. What would your reaction be if, if this was the word of the Lord for your life? Would you receive it or not? Would you say that the message was, was from a false prophet? Right. And it must have missed this one. Would you go about your business as though you never received the word? Truth of the matter is most of us determine whether or not we are receptive of a prophetic word based on the message and not the messenger. As long as we are in agreement with the message, we don't care who delivered it. Pookie can come up here and tell you you're going to be blessed. <laughs> and you're going to receive the word because you're in agreement because you want to be blessed. The same cookie can come the next week and say, you know what? God says, get your house in order. Because you are, 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 are soon to die. And now all of a sudden, well, that's came from Pookie. I can't trust nothing by his mouth. 